Oh, we are live. You know, I always get freaked out because it takes a second for it to update how many people are watching. And so for a few minutes, you're like, I'm casting to the void void of the internet. Yeah. But um, if you're here, tell us you're here in the chat. Tell us um, if, uh, let's see, let's tell us if you've had any, anything to drink this morning. If you had water, water hydration is important. I had water. You had water? No coffee. Though. I had some water. I had some coffee. I had only I was, coffee. I was cramming for the test. I was okay, like, okay. let's let's yeah, drink some more buddy, coffee. Yeah. yeah. But um, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, chat is oh oh my goodness, yeah, there are people in chat. Oh my goodness, Jacqueline, hey, uh, and Adam. Oh yes, yeah, we're getting the dream team together for this one. Uh-huh. Um, my name is Will. Um, this is my heart, and my soul, my son, and my stars, uh, Richard. Uh, and this is my my best buddy Hannah, um, oh, who has previously crashed streams virtually, but um, but now you're actually here live and in person. Yeah, I'm not a pixel, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> wild. Oh, Those tiny people in your in your phone, they're real. Yeah. They, exist. they exist in real life. Um, we're doing we're doing a hacker espresso event. We actually have a lot of fun stuff planned. Uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, where your coffee is grown. We're going to talk about processing methods. We're going to talk about roast levels. Um, they're going to drink some coffee and give us their thoughts. And then I, as promised, am going to drink 24 cups of coffee. Um, you can see them right here. Actually, I don't know. That, that might have been clickbait. I might do I might do like 12, I, yeah. maybe, maybe 16. I don't know. Comment how many cups of coffee I should drink, but it has to be divisible by three. Is it like 12 shots of espresso or is it like? Um, so we'll, I guess we'll get into that. So we're going to be using for making our coffee today. We're going to be using a thing called the Clever Dripper right here. Uh-huh. Um, so it is kind of like a cross between or like a typical filter coffee and an immersion brew. So it's like imagine like a French press had a baby with a pour over um, is kind of what this does. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be using. Um, I use that mostly because it's an easy way to make a lot of coffee really quickly. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. We got. Oh my goodness. We have so many, so many comments and questions. I'm so psyched that y'all are here. Um, it's gonna be a good time. Uh, I know I introduced y'all. Um, do you want to? While I look at some some comments and bring some up, you want to say uh, like what your relationship to coffee is? Like you drink a lot. You drink a little bit. Sure. Um, so I will say I, I was when I grew up. I was told, oh, don't drink go- coffee. You're not gonna grow to be tall. You're not gonna be able to sleep. Um, but I started drinking coffee pretty quick. Um, but when we started dating, I think I got a lot more into coffee. Will really is into kind of hacking his espresso, which I guess is what this event is about. That's why you're here. <laughs> but I learned a lot more about kind of all the different regions where coffee is grown and how things differ. And I think kind of nerding out about that has made it a lot more interesting. Um, so I've gotten into it a lot more in the past kind of year and a half, two years. Yeah, I'm the exact opposite where like I never got into the like details of like where coffee is grown or like mm-hmm. the like background of anything. Um, I'll just go to my school cafe and get like an iced latte with hazelnut syrup and call it a day. Um, and I'll do the same thing at home. Like or even in the office, we have an espresso machine and that's all I'll do. But I only started drinking coffee, I think going into my like junior year of high school mm. is not very good. Um, and I am still short. So <laughs> I, think, I think my mom was right. So it it's worked. Same thing, yeah. you know? like, it's not going to make you grow taller. And it's like, it's not like you have tall jeans anyways. So uh. It's okay. Uh, so this is actually like a good a good point and a good uh, segue that we're getting really nerdy about our coffee here. And if you're interested in learning more about, you know, where your coffee is grown and what's done to it in order to get it to your cup, um, this is great for you. But if you are in a place where you're like, you know what, like I'm here and I and I'm pulling through to Starbucks and getting my getting my PSL or getting my whatever, like like no shade whatsoever. I think I actually think the pumpkin spice latte is delicious. I had one for the first time last year. It was very good. Um, so we're not any, throwing any shade, um, but we are going to take a really nerdy deep dive. Um, a couple questions that folks threw out. Uh, I think Adam, who I'm just so psyched is here with us, uh, asked if I prefer Arabica or Robusta. We can talk about that a little bit. Actually, this is we just start down the nerd rabbit hole. Nice. So there are lots of different species of coffee. Um, there are actually tons, but two of the big ones are Arabica and Robusta. Um, there are a couple big differences. The biggest one actually is that Robusta is, um, it is immune to coffee leaf rust. So there's this disease that kills coffee plants and Robusta is immune to them. Um, unfortunately, Robusta doesn't taste good in my opinion. Um, it tastes very harsh and very bitter. 
Um, whereas Arabica often will taste a little bit more fruity and a little bit sweeter. Um, and so this is kind of the trade-off is Arabica is, it's a little bit fussier. It needs to be grown at higher elevations, um, but I think it tastes really good. Some people do like Robusta. And so again, no shade, but Robusta is going to give you that sort of classic, really bitter coffee flavor um, that some people really like. It also has twice the amount of caffeine. Oh. So if you're just really looking for a buzz, yeah. get yourself some Robusta. Yeah. Um, whereas I'm just trying to avoid caffeine poisoning. So I'm like, yeah. I will take my Arabica cup of coffee, <laughs> you know. Um, so folks asked about tea. Y'all, if you're looking for tea, you're in the wrong place. Go somewhere <laughs> else. We're not doing tea today. No, I mean, some of the things we're talking about will actually kind of apply to tea as well. Some of the things like the elevation that tea has grown at, like some similar things happen, but no, we're not like, it does what it says on the tin y'all. We're doing coffee today. Maybe um, um, I'll like come for Will's brand and do a hack your tea tomorrow. You should. Yeah, happen. no, I would. And then I would crash that and yeah. be like, what is a tea? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just leaves. Yeah, <laughs> um, so uh, I guess we'll, we'll jump in and we'll do like a run through of the big, three of the big factors that influence how your coffee tastes. Um, and then we will actually brew some coffee and, and start tasting it. Um, actually, we can, we can start brewing now and then the yeah. coffee be ready. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to do a little, little montage yeah. moment here. Right. I'm going to steal your seat, I think, because I'm going to look at comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you want to drive StreamYard? Okay. Yeah. Hannah's going to drive StreamYard. And so um, show her love, I guess. Okay. Um, Hello, everyone. Wait, this is so fun. I'm stealing Will's setup. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to put a lot of stuff over here and it'll get really messy, but yeah, that's fine. Ugh. Okay, so the three big factors in coffee that we're going to be talking about today are location, um, and, and that's kind of going to be a, a shorthand for elevation. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at processing, and then we're going to look at roast level. Um, now probably, actually drop in the comments if, if any of those things, if you know what they mean, if you know about elevation in coffee or if you know about processing in coffee, um, I would guess that probably of the three, more people know about uh, the roast level, right? Yeah. You might know what a dark roast tastes like versus a light roast. Um, but so basically, the this is really, you can tell the story of coffee coming to your cup in these three steps. So obviously, coffee comes from a plant and it's grown somewhere, right? Um, and we often use this term terroir, which is like how the earth in the place it's grown affects the, like how, how it develops. People will talk about this with wine and chocolate, right? Um you can spell the word. You know how to spell the word terroir? This right. man does because he, he's oh, French. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you well, take French in college? I hope. Uh, high school. Oh, oh. Wisconsin high school is kind of coming through. You still? Like, I don't remember the language. <laughs> I think that's how it's spelled. That's embarrassing if not. Yeah. So we use this word Sorry, terroir to be like, like stuff from the dirt got into the coffee, kind okay. of, right? But that's not really actually that true. There are some cases, like if you're grown in like volcanic soil, maybe you can Ooh. taste that. But usually what really matters is the place that it's grown dictates a bunch of other things, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things in coffee is the elevation. So this is actually something that I will do is if I'm drinking a coffee from, say, Brazil, I will Google what is the average elevation in Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. And that actually gives you a really important insight into what that coffee is going to taste like. Um, the sort of really simple version of this is that if you're grown at a higher elevation, you will get sort of less sun and less water. And so you will grow more slowly. And the slower you grow, the more time you have to develop sugars. Oh. So really it's the slower, the higher up you are, the slower you grow and the slower you grow, the sweeter you will oh, be. Okay. So if you're growing at very, very low elevation, um, like Brazil is actually a place that has pretty low elevation on average, mm -hmm. uh, you are more likely to get coffees that taste kind of more on the nutty side where it's kind of that like roastiness, but you're not really getting a deep sweetness. Whereas if you're getting a coffee from a really high elevation area, like Ethiopia is, is mm -hmm. relatively high elevation. Um, Colombia is relatively high elevation. These will more give you sort of like that sweet, juicy flavor. Um, so elevation is kind of our first stop on the, on the trip. Um, any questions about how elevation affects coffee? Let's check our chat. Drop your questions in chat. We can interrogate Will as much as you want. This is your one time, y'all. Heck yeah. <laughs> I have to stay here for the next how long? Like hour, hour yeah. two hours. Actually, I'll stay until we're out of questions. Yeah. Because I, I love this. Yeah. This, this is, is fun. I like I work 364 days of the year. So one day a year I can do this stream. <laughs> that don't do the math on that because it doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> someone said interesting. Okay. I'm glad you find it interesting. Yeah. So that's elevation. So one thing that you can you can try to predict how your coffee is going to taste is if it comes from a country that has high elevation, you might expect it to taste a little bit sweeter. If it comes from a country with low elevation, you might expect it to be a little bit more bitter, a little bit more on like the earthy, nutty side. Yeah. 
Um, and actually, that is a great moment to introduce our three coffees. So we have an Ethiopian coffee. Okay. This is coffee number one. We have, oh yeah, and that, that'll be blue. The, the color code, we're doing color coding. So okay. uh, that'll be, I'm colorblind. So I don't know why I chose to color code it. Uh, we have a Colombian coffee. And that's kind of at a, at a more moderate elevation. It's not, not low, but, but not particularly high. And then finally, we have a coffee um, from, I, I believe the country's name is pronounced Timor-Leste. Um, and that is a sort of South, uh, Southeast Asian sort of Pacific country, uh, really close to Indonesia. Um, and so that is like a really low elevation. They coffee. all smell really good just as you're opening them. Oh yeah, actually, them. this would be good. Like, do, do a little color commentary. Yeah. Like, this is our Ethiopian, kind of a little bit fruity, a little bit sour. Yeah. Okay, let's do this one. Um, it's still like kind of, it's not like the most nutty, but it's like, mm. there is some like roastiness to it that I didn't mm -hmm. anticipate. Yeah. yeah. And that's the Colombian coffee? That's the Colombian. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. And then finally, our, our Timor Leste. Um, we have a question from Jack. She says, does elevation count if you put it in a hot air balloon? Um, this is actually a really, really great question. And no, this is, like, I'm going to run with this. And the answer is absolutely. Um, there actually are examples of people growing coffee in places that it should not be grown. They actually grew a coffee plant in the UK, um, which is bazonkers because the climate of the UK is not yeah. really good for growing coffee. But you could 100% take a little coffee plant. Oh, actually, okay, little detour. Uh, I have coffee plants growing everywhere in my house. Um, so this is actually literally what a coffee plant looks like. Let's see if we can, we can get it to yeah. focus here. Boom, that is a coffee plant. You can take this, throw it up in a hot air balloon, and you would expect to see most of those same effects of, of elevation. So um, silly question, but um, but a good one nonetheless. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jack. Yeah. Um, and Adam's question is just, when are you going to be able to let him make you a cup of coffee? Yo, literally square up my guy, pull through. <laughs> like, if you show up to Seattle, I will drink whatever maybe, you put in front of me. Maybe you'll be the coach for Hackman, and then you can go get a coffee. Ooh, MLH, if you're listening, make it happen. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, also, this is way too late, but I realized that I did not formally introduce myself or like who y'all are. That's um, okay. Yeah, but y'all know. Y'all know. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know. Good. Um, oh, speaking of which, maybe this is a good time to throw in. Um, at the uh, on Tuesday, I'm dyeing my hair, and y'all get to vote for which color I dye it. I vote blonde. You all should vote blonde. If you don't right. remember, Hana likes blonde. Yeah, and if you want a reference, go to like I think Will's Discord photo is blonde mlh icon uh, yes oh yeah no i think i think jacqueline oh. made this for me yeah um, and i'm holding a shark and i have blonde hair and the mlh shirt that i'm wearing just says gay on it and i, <laughs> and I, I love it um but um yeah we're gonna drop a form later so stay until the end and we'll drop a form where you can put in your vote and there'll be a very secret word that we tell you that you have to put in there to make yeah. your vote count um okay so we talked about elevation the next big one that we're talking about um is um processing method so Basically, this just means you get actually like it's like a cherry off of a coffee plant and you want to turn that into a dry, what we call a green bean, which actually I can I can pull out. I have some green beans in my closet here. Um, this is just really show and tell. Yeah, just like a what's in my house tour. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I have way too much coffee in my in my pantry, but this is what green beans look like. I don't know if that's going to get a good zoom in on it. It's still trying to zoom. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so processing is the method of getting like literally just a fruit to this, right? Mm -hmm. And there are a couple big ways of processing it. Um, the sort of normal way is called uh, the washed process, where you basically just wash off all of the fruit and you're left with the pit and you let that dry. And that becomes the bean, right? Oh. That's kind of like the default way. Um, there is also a way of doing it called the natural process, where you leave all of the fruit on the pit and you let it dry that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so this gives it a sort of like a fermenty, very robust, like very loud. Honestly, the way that I would describe natural coffees is that it's like loud. Whatever you're getting is gonna be like multiplied by two because you have more contact time with that fruit, right? Mm -hmm. That's the natural process. Um, there's a process in between the two that we call the honey process um, that is kind of just in between the two. And then there was another process called the wet hold process, which is super funky. Um, I won't get too into it, but it, um, you end up letting the, the beans sit in water for a period of time and you end up uh, getting what I would describe as kind, I, like funky is the word I would use to describe. Like, honestly, it will smell maybe like popcorn. It'll maybe smell like cannabis. It will do interesting flavors for your, for your nose. Um, and so today our three coffees actually have three different processing methods. Um, so our Colombian is the washed coffee. Mm -hmm. 
And that's going to give you sort of very clean, very sort of linear, straightforward flavors. Um, our Ethiopian is the natural coffee. And so that'll give you sort of really loud, juicy, fruity flavors. Um, and then our Timor Leste is a um, is a wet hold process. And so we're expecting sort of funkier flavors out of that. Like, How did you get all of these? Like, do, do you really want to know? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> It's always more stuff coming out of his pantry. I would turn the camera to show you all. But... I'm just like running over to the pantry. I have so many of these. I ordered yeah. green coffee on the internet and then I actually roast it myself. Oh, shoot. Uh, okay. Yeah, which is actually a great segue into our, our third and final category here, which is um, roast level. And and I think we saw in the chat that a lot of people kind of know what roast level is. I mean, do you all have a sense of roast level? Like what, what does it taste like when something's darkly roasted? Yeah, dark, there's light roast, dark. I just know what whatever Starbucks kind of has. Um, they like market on their on their coffee bean bags. Yeah, very limited understanding though. But so, like, what would, you, what would you say a dark roast tastes like? Very roasty and very nutty to me. Okay, least. yeah, yeah. Nutty is a great word for for a dark roast. Yeah, I gotta like. So, Will has this wheel, and it's not a color wheel. It's like an adjective taste smell wheel, and it's like not. It's like the opposite of floral. Hmm. So mm, I actually really like that as right here. Yeah, something here maybe, because the opposite of floral they give you like beanie. It's not like <laughs> oh, like honestly that feels like a little bit of a cop out. It's yeah, like what does it, does it taste like? It tastes like coffee beans. Yeah. Like what what does that mean? I know people are always like oh yeah I love bean juice. I'm like just say coffee. Like <laughs> it's not that hard. There's a word for yeah, it. Yeah, there definitely is. Is that cereal? I guess like malty. Yeah. All right. Hey, Google, set a timer for four minutes. Um, apologies to everybody at home who's Google okay. just set a timer. We're starting now. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I think all the descriptions you gave. Uh, Richard, did you have any, any descriptors yeah. for? Uh... Yeah, I was going to say one thing is I tend to notice just any really delicate flavors, whether that's something that's floral or fruity or a little bit sour, in a light roast has come through a lot more um, versus a dark roast you tend to kind of like tamp down on a lot of those flavors. Mm, yeah, no, I think, I think that is a great way of putting it is that I mean, one way that I heard it described is if you roast something really darkly, all coffees kind of become the same, right? You can turn any coffee into a coffee that is sort of, you know, bitter, but maybe chocolatey and maybe a little bit nutty if you just roast it really, really dark. And the lighter you roast, the more you're going to see sort of those specific characteristics we were talking about earlier is the more you're going to see, is it nutty versus floral versus fruity versus you know, all those things. Um, and so again, our three coffees have three different roast levels. Um, our Ethiopian natural coffee is lightly roasted. Our Colombian, uh, Colombian washed coffee is medium roasted. Okay. And then our, um, our Timor Leste wet hold coffee is darkly roasted. So we're kind of getting the full spectrum of what coffee can yeah. be for us. Um, also for, for those of you playing along at home, um, we had 24 grams of ground coffee that we put with 400 grams of water at 95 degrees Celsius. Yesterday, I promised people that I would work in Celsius today. And so I did it. Oh, nice. I measured in Celsius. Yes. Be proud of me. Yeah. Um, oh, also speaking of which little plug, we're doing the, um, the machine learning track. And, uh, yesterday we did intro to Python. Um, but if you already know some Python or didn't want that review, we're start we're getting going with the, the kind of hard natural language processing, machine learning stuff um, in like an hour after this ends. So definitely pull through. Yeah, you're already on this stream. You might as well chill for the other one. Yeah, exactly. It'll be a fun, it's a fun time, yeah. right? It's what is time. like, maybe you want to give a sneak peek. What are, what are you all building? Um, so we're looking at a couple fun different kinds of models. Um, we're going to be using linear regression and artificial neural networks and sequence models. And the big thing we're working on just as a test case is taking Amazon reviews and then oh, trying to predict the number cool. of stars. So uh, there's a lot cool. of ways you can think about using that. Yeah, you could like go and analyze tweets and try to predict, is this, you know, is this yeah. tweet positive on the product or negative? Um, we also, if we have time, we will look at making our, our models actually write text for us. So uh, we'll, turn our, we'll turn our models into, um, into upset Karens who write nasty reviews online. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Tech for social good. Exactly, um, exactly. You said it. Yeah, we have a few comments. Um, no, so actually first question, does Will yeah. do latte art? I, this is a good question. So I would say that latte art is my weakest area of coffee expertise. Um, this man can tell you that I can do a heart, I can do a little bit of a tulip, um, but it is tough. Um, actually, right back here is my espresso machine, Flo. Um, her full name is Florence. 
But um, she is great at making espresso. She's a, an Escaso, a, a, a Escaso dream. Um, and she's great at making espresso. She is just okay at steaming milk. And you need to steam um, milk really well in order yeah. to make good latte art. Um, but uh, yeah, I would do okay at the latte art. Uh, maybe maybe next time we could do a latte yeah. art championship. I think so. I I just got into latte art. Adam, I know the question was not for me. Oh, but nice. The office has like the same similar machine, but it just it makes it too like foamy. Like mm, there's like yeah. a good consistency yeah. you need for latte art, and I uh, it's never that. Yeah, I've heard that the ideal consistency is kind of like wet paint. If you like, oh. swirl it, and you kind of see like a thick, but not like not like a marshmallow. Yeah, right? no, this turns into a marshmallow like whipped yeah. cream type of situation. That's tough. Um, you've just been deemed a coffee holic. Yeah, I'll, I'll write it with pride. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have other names for bean juice, bean broth, and bean stew. Yeah. I just thought we'd yeah. share. Is that aerosol can? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's a cool person to hang out with. I agree. Ah, uh, hey, I'm yeah. so thrilled that you're all here. Okay. Yeah. So that was our timer. Um, and so we are going to, this is actually really cool. I'll hold it up to show you exactly how this works. Um, so it is holding the co the brewing coffee Stop. inside right here. Hey, hey Google. Google. Stop. <laughs> Thank you. And when you place it down. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, oh, okay. we're, we're out of focus. Um, oh, hold on. Hannah, will you cover your face? Oh, my. <laughs> no, actually, like, yeah, no, it worked. It worked. Oh, Keep your face covered. <laughs> um, and so then when you set it down, all the coffee pours out from the bottom. It has Ooh. a little, little gasket. Yeah. It yeah. really just worked. Um, and so that is how we actually separate our coffee from the sort of coffee slurry. Um, so we'll do that on all of these. And we still have our, our Ethiopian, our Colombian, Whoa. and our Timor Leste. Very cool. Uh, yeah. And so the first thing that we're going to do once this actually um, sort of separates out is y'all are going to actually taste the finished coffees and tell us your thoughts. And then we are going to have a fun time and we're going to do a blind taste test where I'm going to taste and see if I can pick out the different origins, processes, and roast levels of coffee. Because I am always here to make sure that people aren't bullshitting this, you know? I'm allowed uh, contractually one yes, person on stream are. every every stream. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's in that's in my contract. Um, but but I really don't like it when people BS and they're like, oh, like if you've ever seen somebody describe wine and they're like, this wine tastes very Fancy. angular and bouncy <laughs> and it's very playful. I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. That doesn't mean anything, right? Uh, and so I don't want to use all these words if at the end of the day I can't actually pick them out. You know? Yeah. Um, so we're gonna put it to the test and see. Um, Let's see if I'm BSing, you know? Yeah, I'm also intrigued because the chemical is a flavor that I have used before to describe coffee. Mm. I feel like, like sometimes if Starbucks makes it wrong or like with ice, sometimes things get gross. I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I will, yeah. I'll be very honest because I'm not like the biggest coffee, coffee person. I could, sure. I could do a good latte, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll right see. On. Um, okay. We are almost f finished separating out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, okay, so I, I know I said that I was gonna drink 24 cups of coffee. Um, I have 24 cups here, but I want to let each of our friends here taste it. So I think that they will be doing three cups of coffee each, and then I will be doing the rest. I think okay. that's what I can offer. I think that's solid. Looks like this one finished first. Yeah. Also, we did, we'll get maybe 400 mils of water out-ish, probably less yeah. than that. So each of the cups will be kind of small, yeah. Um, I don't wanna, I don't want to admit that the title is like a little bit clickbait. This is a little bit clickbait. It's okay. Someone said they didn't know this event was actually going to be about coffee until the, you you plugged it at your stream yesterday. Someone thought it would be about Java, like Java the like. Oh, that's the, funny. Like, yeah. Programming language. No, yeah. honestly, we don't like Java in this household. Yeah. Um, it's not for us. It was the clear Python stand. Yeah, and I mean, you. I don't know. You have have done a lot of JavaScript. Right? I have done a lot of JavaScript. I'm using TypeScript for work, actually. Oh, okay, sure, Which, like, I sure. guess makes sense. because It's grown up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's also, yeah. So that's kind of that. Yeah, I don't... Java was just, like, a, you just took it in school and called it a day. Like, no one used yeah. it after that. Especially, apparently, all of Amazon isn't written in Java, though, or, like, most of Amazon stuff mm. is Java, which I heard. I wrote some Java, Java when I interned there. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so I heard... I heard that's pretty well and this is the sorry you are you are still gonna get some tech stuff <laughs> um my boyfriend richard he actually is a material scientist oh, and so cool. he's hearing all of this computer science stuff and he's just like okay honey um but if i describe to somebody what my ideal language would be like yes. i would say things like you know what i want it to be explicitly typed but i want it to be expressive i want a lot of good libraries i want yeah. a lot of support um i would i would like it actually to use curly braces 
Um, I would I would love it if it is really easy to run anywhere. Yeah. And then I have to realize that the language that I just described is Java, Java right? Yeah. But why do I hate it? Why do yeah. I hate Java? <laughs> I yeah. Don't know. Okay. Yeah. We have finished brewing, and um, oh. hmm. I guess we'll just get rid of these. We'll throw these over here. Y'all can't see this, but off the screen, there's just like a massive mess. I, yeah. I was very, very intentional keeping this part of the kitchen clean <laughs> and everything else. It's just a disaster. Alrighty. Are y'all ready to sample some coffee? Yeah. yeah. You're just going to get like a very little taste. Yeah. So that I will get attacked with caffeine. <laughs> okay. So here is our, remember, this is sort of high elevation Ethiopian coffee that is lightly roasted and naturally processed. It is very like florally, but not like directly mm. florally. Mm. Yeah, you also get like a little bit of sweetness, like yeah. a little bit of fruitiness. Yeah. I think depending on the Ethiopian I've had, sometimes it can be like a very distinct, like, oh, this tastes like blueberry or blackberry. Mm -hmm. This, it feels a little bit more generically fruity. Yes. I couldn't say like, oh, this is this exact type of berry, but it definitely does actually have some sweetness to it. I was thinking, I can't pin it to a, a berry, but I was getting like pomegranate vibes a little bit maybe. Mm -hmm. Like some sort of, like, I don't know, like the after kind of like aftertaste in a way. I do, yeah, I do. Yeah. And I also just like love that, you know, I mean, you're a little bit of a coffee nerd. You, um, by no, your own admission, yeah. are not a coffee nerd. Yeah. But like we walked through some of the things that we would predict and it's like, you really are picking out some of yeah. those things. You're getting sort of the floralness. You're getting that sweeter aspect from the high elevation. Um, yeah. yeah I, I love that. I think those are really, really great descriptions. Uh, all right, you want to go for our second coffee, yes, the yeah. um, natural, or the, sorry, washed Colombian coffee um, that was medium roasted. I don't know how to describe that. Mm. Yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit weirder than I expected, actually. Yeah. It's like, almost a little bit savory, mm, mm. like, almost like, like, woody, earthy. Yeah, a little too earthy for me. Like, in in the best way possible, it could be dirt water, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? Like, it's like a little bit, a little bit tangy, but not in like a. These folks are way. really putting the country of Colombia on blast right now. I, I, mean, I like, yeah, I really am. talks about Colombian coffee. No, but that's yeah. good. I mean, having strong opinions about what you like and don't like is awesome. Um, so I'm glad to dial in. We're not a big fan of this sort of medium elevation washed Colombia. Yeah, oh. I think the aftertaste is nice, but. The actual when I was drinking it, it's like mm, not my favorite. Yeah, a little bit funky. Yeah, definitely. I think tangy was the word you used, and that was very true. Mm. Um, and so this is now our third and final. It's the um, darkly roasted, wet hold Timor Leste, very low elevation. Yeah. Immediately just before drinking it, I think smelling it is very, very roasty. So I, that that like lines mm, up pretty much. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is like sour. Hmm. Yeah, I'll say it almost is like a little bit. Yeah, this wheel is great. Yeah. Um, like a little bit dusty. Oh, interesting. To me, at least. I think the flavor comes across as not quite as bold as either of the first two, mm. the Ethiopian or the oh, Colombian. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. It's yeah. like a little bit, I don't know, like the texture of it. It almost feels like it's... Um, like in wine, we'll talk about like the body of a wine. Mm -hmm. um, and this like tastes very light to me. Yeah. Like a little bit more on like the watery side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Like a mix of like beanie and, and like, I don't, yeah, I don't know actually, somewhere in that area. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say that this coffee is often tasted like, or it smelled like popcorn almost. Yeah. Um, the or, roastiness. Yeah. Or, or like uh, something a little bit almost skunky. Uh, it's always what I've gotten. So it sounds like out of the three, probably the Ethiopian was y'all's favorite. Yeah. Yeah. You both agree on that. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's that's uh, good, to, good to understand. Oh. Will should open a cafe. You have, you have fans. Do it. I, you know what? If any of y'all pull through Seattle, I will make you a cup of coffee. Yeah. I'd be thrilled to. I mean, he did that with me. So I feel like he's, he's that's serious, y'all. That's true. Um, okay. So this is kind of the, the big final finale of our coffee event where y'all are going to pour coffee into each of these, mix them up, and I'm going to try to pick out the Ethiopian, the Colombian, and the Timor-Leste. Mm. Um, 
I don't know based on how much coffee we have if we'll be able to fill up all the cups. So at least maybe try to get at least four cups for each. Yeah. And if you have enough, you can do it with. But um, you'll then mix them up and I will come back and I will taste them and I will see if I can pick them apart. Oh, okay. Interesting. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a blind taste test and kind of put my yeah. palate um, under the microscope. Are y'all y'all down for that? Yeah. yeah. You know, right. uh, groupings of three. Okay. Um, you can actually just mix them up and I'll try oh, to, I'll try to separate over. them out into three categories. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. Good. And I will go prepare my palate. <laughs> yes. It's always interesting when you go to like um, a perfume section of the store. They have like coffee smelling situations going on. Mm. Um, okay, so we have four. I think we have enough to do yeah. six of each. I, Let, let's go. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's the same amount of coffee. Yeah. No matter how we divide it. Anyway, all right, so we're not mixing them, correct? No. Okay. I was like, maybe, maybe we could do that. Although that off. is that is a fun I'm, test that you can actually do. Yeah. Um, and I know Will and I have done this together. Um, having a couple of distinct coffees where round one you test them by themselves and then you start to do mixtures Mixing. where you see okay like what is the dominant coffee in this like, yeah it might be 75 of an ethiopian 25 percent of a colombian but yeah. you know what is the main component in it yeah we've we've got so much coffee it's yeah. gonna be very yeah, I don't know. No. he bought all these beans for a reason <laughs> Um, while we pour, yes. um, something that I think is really interesting that I will share, um, this is on the topic of coffee versus tea, because I know someone brought this up. Yeah. Um, something that's cool about, I'll maybe start filling it from this side. Oh, wait, should I also do six of this? Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I was like processing still. Um, <laughs> but, um, coffee um, there's an interesting thing. A lot of people think, oh, dark roast is very bitter. It this must have that one. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So these are our red cups here. Don't um, look But um, people think, oh, dark roast, that's really bitter. It's like super strong. It must be really high in caffeine. Um, but that's actually not true. Um, so light roast coffee um, has the highest amount of caffeine, caffeine in it. And the reason for that is um, you're basically breaking down um, less of the coffee like the caffeine in the coffee oh. and so more of it is actually available to end up in your cup um, but this is the opposite for teas so black tea is the most processed mm. um out of the like top types of tea hey i hear you talking about tea and we're not doing tea today <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay, well we're not doing tea but <laughs> the more processed tea is um the more caffeine it has interestingly mm. so there's kind of this inverse uh relationship between the two which I just think it's kind of cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so we've got all of our coffees poured out, and I guess we can get rid of our lids here. Yeah. And now we're just gonna mix everything up. And um, okay, I'm just scared. Leave him gonna... with a fun pattern to try and differentiate. This is really an obscene amount. Of yeah, coffee. this really is. Oh wait. So we're not gonna know either. Um, so we marked all of the bottom of them. So maybe we should have actually explained this. Um, and now it's really hard to show you. Um, can you all see that? Oh, I see Probably this. Oh, there, are, there are colored stickers on the bottom of each of the cups. And so you... that's how we will know in the end if he got them right or not. Nice. If you want to come up with a pattern and let them know so they can know the suspense, you can go well, out Ooh, well, I was going to say, we've already started mixing. It may be too late. Yeah, it might be too late, but I think we'll all... I'll figure it out. Okay, good to know. Now, Will did mention I'm not a computer scientist by training, but I do enjoy kind of thinking about uh, mathematical puzzles. Um, and this has me thinking like, oh, what's our what's our most efficient way to mix up all of these yeah. cups to give him the maximum entropy <laughs> oh. to really keep him on his toes? Do we have, okay. Anybody have any ideas for a pattern we can make? We could arrange these however we want. We yeah. Could shape. Drop any recommendations of like how we should mix this up. Like what's like the biggest way we can bamboozle Will? We've kind of just got a, a mess here. We got a little... <laughs> colored stickers on the bottom. Will is, and Will is partially colorblind. Y'all playing my man Ron. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, a friend is asking, what do you study? Um, I studied material science and engineering in undergrad, which a lot of people are like, what is that? Mm -hmm. um, which is a great question, but basically it is the study of all materials around us. Um, so, for example, if you think about um, phones, um, we obviously would love to engineer the glass of those phones so that they are less likely to shatter, for example. And so thinking about what different materials can we 
add? How can we process those materials to improve their properties? Similarly, plastics, how do we make plastics that are um, more sustainable? Um, so different things that. like that. Um, okay. Yeah, we've got... Adam, I don't think we can do that suggestion. What is Adam's suggestion? <laughs> Put vodka in one and see if we'll <laughs> tell. I'm right here, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think these are... I have no idea which one is which. So. Yeah, I've been just looking at the water. Okay, I see your little triangle kind of formation yeah, in a way. Yeah, we've almost got a lattice going on. Yeah. Here. Okay, I, I feel like we can bamboozle Will. Like, maybe, like, this can work. All right, I think he's going to get at least 80% right. I'm ready. Really? I have my cupping spoon and a little spittoon. I'll, I'll try to swallow most of it, but... Uh, oh, I'll, actually, also, do we have... Uh, soda water for a palate cleanser. Oh, and does that actually like work as a palate cleanser? Yes, yeah, so this is actually a hot tip, is if you're doing like a lot of comparative tastings, um, soda water is a great um, palate cleanser. So I will give that a go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A little beast glass. Amazing. These are your favorite. All right. I hope y'all had fun while I was gone. Oh, it is so, that is so many cups of coffee. That's a lot. We ended this up is... doing six each. Okay. I maybe should have asked you to put them in groups of three so I could do some process of elimination. Oh. Um, yeah. This is going to be the ultimate job. This is going to be yeah, very hard. We're really though. bamboozling you today. Okay. It's funny how, like, you're using soda to, like, cleanse your palate because when you're smelling perfume, you use coffee to cleanse your palate. Oh, that's super interesting. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, huh, is, I did not know that. It is science. Like, right. Yeah. You know, if you go into, like, Ulta, they'll have, like, little coffee bean situations. Slurp number one. Hmm. Okay, tentatively, I'm gonna say that's Colombian, but I'm gonna have to taste some more before mm -hmm. before I'm sure. Mm, I'm pretty confident that's Timor Leste. Okay. Do we want to like? Oh, you're making a little grouping, correct? Yeah, okay. yeah, but I might I might revisit it. Yeah. He's actually using a spoon like it's bean soup. Tim Timor Leste. Okay. Uh, I mean, y'all, it is bean soup. Get over it. <laughs> you see, now I'm second guessing myself because yeah. that kind of tastes like Timor Leste as well. Maybe that's Colombian. Maybe a palate cleanse. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I just really, I want to taste an Ethiopian because I know I'll be able to get that. Yeah. Oh, that's Ethiopian. What like gave it away to you? What what's the scent? The yeah. taste is almost doing like a Jolly Rancher okay. thing for me. I'm that's smelling fair. it and I'm like, this is like a you know, this yeah. is like a. Or what's the what's the blue Gatorade? Oh, like blue raspberry or something. Yeah, it's like a blue raspberry okay. or like a yeah, it's yeah. And I'm I'm pretty confident that that is okay. Ethiopian. Ethiopian. So we'll do Ethiopian, Colombian, Timor Leste. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm I'm getting into it now. Well, like, do a little percentage at the end of, like, his score, you know? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's Ethiopian. Hmm. Now, we did discuss, we said we could make this even harder. We could start mixing that. And we were going to, oh, like, mix, gosh. mix. It's just, like, totally punk me. Yeah. I think that's Timor Leste. They were all the same coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in my head the whole time. You've played yourself. Mm. <sighs> Gosh. Probably Ethiopian. Why is that less obviously Ethiopian? No, yeah. I'm gonna say Ethiopian. Someone was wanting you to drink the whole cup. <laughs> I might have to if I have to go back to confirm all of these, yeah. you know? So... By the time you like sip like all with a spoon, Ugh. you'll you'll have many cups in you. Oh, that's the first one that I'm like, that's definitely Colombian, mm. which makes me second guess these two. So these yeah. are these are the maybes. Okay. Push these further. These are all yeah. some space here too. confident they're Timor Leste. But this this was I was getting more of that chocolatiness and less of the funkiness. Um oh, Aerosol Can has a uni exam and he's hanging out with they're hanging out with us. Aw, I'm uh, I'm touched that you care yeah. more about us and coffee than your academic future. Yeah. <laughs> well, we good academic, choices. Academic presence. Oh. Yeah. oh. Yes. Checkmate. 
Um, okay, yeah, I'm feeling more like these are probably Colombian. Okay. I think it's Colombian. Is it time for a palate cleanser? If that one's Colombian, it might be time for a palate cleanser. Oh, no, that's Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting that. Getting that Jolly Rancher. All right. But I think you're right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so these are the maybes. These are the Colombians. Those are the Timor Leste's. And there are five of each. There's six, six of each. Oh my goodness, that's so many cups of coffee. We just had so much coffee. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. Timor Leste easily. Oh, wow. I feel like yeah, it, that one was the most like distinct in, in the like the exact not opposite of Ethiopian, but like very distinct mm -hmm. compared to it. Yeah. I think that's our Colombian. Okay. Okay, I'm. I feel good Four? that like none of them have like all of the cups. Right? Yeah, and you have some maybes here. So like, yeah, yeah. Ten more last day. Oh wow! I wonder if like because the coffees of cold have changed since mm. when we've tasted it. This is actually totally a real thing. Is that yeah? Mm -hmm. As as the coffee cools, you'll get different expressions. Um, some people find that as the coffee cools, it gets more acidic. Mm. <sighs> Ethiopian. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm feeling decently good. I, I, I think I will get most of them right. I might misplace one or two just fair. because there are a lot. Richard had a lot of confidence in you and I didn't, but I feel like you might be right. <laughs> Colombian. Nice. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Mm, I think that's Ethiopian, which means I have, oh wait, no. That yeah, could be. You have six in yeah. Ethiopian oh. now. And I feel very confident that all six of those are Ethiopian. And then you have five of this, two maybes, and then five Timor Leste. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. yeah. So of our two maybes. Yeah, that's like. Two of the, or one of them should be. In each. Yeah. Hmm. So they actually have like competitions that people show up to where they do this and they do it timed. Oh, And it's whoa. like who can do it the fastest yeah. under, under sort of time pressure. I think it'd be super fun to go and compete in that. Yeah. Well. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. It's, it's funny that some of these are harder than others because they're all the same coffee, exactly. right? They literally all came out yeah, of the that. same system. Like, Yeah. It's, I'm leaning more towards Columbia on that. Oh, that's Timor Leste. Okay. Okay. If you get 100%, that's like kind of iconic. So just because I know people are like, uh, you didn't drink all the cups of coffee. I'm going to go through and resample all of them just for quality control. <laughs> what? what? That's, what we, that's what you asked for. If you guys wonder why, um, we'll buzz later on. Yeah. You know no, yeah. Pull through in an hour, hour and a half for the um, part two of machine learning track and yeah. I'll be high energy. Honestly, when I'm tasting the Colombian, I'm just making sure that there is no Timor Leste in there, right? Because okay. the Timor Leste is so distinct. Yeah. It's so funky and popcorny and skunky. Skunky, interesting. And it's like, if I can just confirm it's not Timor Leste, then I know it's Colombian. I'm feeling pretty good, y'all. Okay. I I don't want to like this is a problem. I don't want to be overly confident and then make a fool out of myself. It's like all of that was all Ethiopian. Like, was all, yeah. <laughs> everything is mixed up. But yeah. yeah, some of our fans are pressed that you're putting the same spoon in all the cups. Maybe that's also tarnishing kind of. Um, this is so. This is a great point. And so often I will actually have this cup has some water in it, and I will just douse it. Um, you end up like ultimately you're going to have stuff that's left over in your palate anyway. And yeah. so you do actually have to do it like, like there's always going to be some mix up of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because you do have to kind of try to see through that. Um, but it is easier if you are dunking your spoon or have a different spoon for each cup. These are all things that you can do. Um, so this is like totally fair. Um, I am making it a little bit harder than it needs to be, but it is something that ends up being kind of inevitable. Mm -hmm. Okay. These should be Timor Leste. I have no clue how actually interesting this is to watch. Like, I know it's just me tasting <laughs> a bunch of nondescript cups of coffee. I guess the exciting part will be for the reveal where yeah. you get to either laugh at me or or fall at my feet. Maybe there should be some sort of like, oh, if like everyone puts their guesses of like how. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Like how likely the Will percentage. is to get, what percentage is he closest to than like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this, this is great, actually. Everybody yeah. in the chat vote how many out of, I guess it's 18 total. Yeah. How many out of 18 am I going to get right? And uh, I don't know if anybody, well, 
if anybody guesses exactly correctly, um, then you get a prize. Yeah, winner gets their vote to count for two, for for two votes for. Oh yeah, I like hair. that. I like that. Yeah. Um, I also like the um, if, if you get it right, then um, then you can come to Seattle and I'll make you coffee. Yeah, that's a, that's a prize. Your fans have like a lot of confidence in you 18 out of 18 100 percent wow 16 out of 18 is still really high honestly I... honestly but piper thank you for just not making the bar so high because <laughs> if i mess this up i'm just gonna be i'm gonna feel like i'm really letting people down you know yeah but i do appreciate the confidence i'm y'all i am actually feeling kind of confident i i want to like say 15 out of 18 but like with your confidence i feel okay. like it could be no 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 too. place that guess because okay. i need i need somebody to be a doubter you know yeah i need some haters to overcome yeah that, exactly so. <laughs> Okay, Richard. What are you? What are you gonna yeah, guess? Yeah, I think eighteen. Really? All right. Okay. Um. So, put in your put in your final votes. Yeah. Before we we check the colors on the bottom. So just to confirm, um, the Ethiopian was green. Blue. The Ethiopian blue. Was blue. Okay. Green was the Colombian. And then the red the one was the. Yes. Tomorrow. So okay. in theory, these should all be blue. These should all be green, and these should all be red. Ooh, someone's someone's. Okay, coming. that is technically true. Is that you can't get. You can't get 17 out of 18 because if I had switched them, yeah. That's your cup, yeah. I could get 15 out of 18. Right? That was my guess. So if you okay, don't so that, that's valid. Me. Don't don't come at Hannah. Yeah. 15 out of 18 is legal. Yeah. Um, we do combinatorics here. Okay. <laughs> I I guess the most it's not really a dramatic way to do this, but I guess we just reveal cups one. Wow, two out of 18. That would be like difficult to do that bad. Well, okay. I, I appreciate some realistic expectations, but that one just hurts. Yeah, knowing like Will's coffee enthusiasm, I, mean, I feel like on. I can't. Someone's coming for me. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Um, I guess we just do the cups one by one. Maybe we yeah. see. I, I'll say the Ethiopian were the ones that I was the most confident in. So if any of these are wrong, like rescind my coffee license. Okay. You know? Okay. So Ethiopian was blue. Yeah. Okay, blue. Yeah, blue. Boom. Okay, we blue. got one. These would be the ones that I got right. I yeah. guess we'll put over here. Yeah, that's a good idea because we have out of eighteen. Blue. 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 All right. Already have two out of eighteen. <laughs> Doubter. Someone said one, but you already passed. Oh, that. oh, you're already wrong. Yeah. Okay, Blue. three. Yeah. Y'all, if I get if I get eighteen out of eighteen, I would be a happy lad. Four. Blue. I'm. We're confirming this by the way, y'all. Yeah, yeah. No, they're checking. Yeah. I can't just make this shit up. Yes. It's okay. I can't make this stuff up. Yeah. Blue. Okay, you can make, change your contract to two words. Two two curses a stream. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, six actually, six for oh again. heck yes! I didn't curse at all on my first stream, so okay, this makes up for it. Yeah. This makes it up. Yeah. yeah. No big deal. Okay, so 100 of the um. Ooh, actually, in order to preserve the drama, I think we have to alternate because if I get all of the reds right, yeah, then you would just know. Right? Oh. So we'll reveal a red and then a green and then a red and then a green. Okay. So this okay. should be red. Yes. Hey. Yeah. This should be green. What? Yes. yes. <laughs> this should. Ooh. <laughs> I'm a very clumsy guy. Um. This should be red. Yes. Hey. And this should be green. green. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yo, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm feeling good. Am I going to regret my 15 and 18? Okay, that's red. That's red. And that is green. Yes. Oh, y'all. Oh, it's a good day. And there's only three left for each. So, very crazy. Red. Red. Oh, my God. Green. <sighs> Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I do it. I think you did red. Red. Yep. 18 out of 18. Green. Green. What? What if? What if the last two were switched? <laughs> oh yeah, that wasn't that the ones you were debating between anyway. They actually were the, okay. the two in the middle. Yeah. Red. Hey. Okay, good. Okay. We're 18 for 18, y'all. Oh, and I guess we'll just confirm. It's yes, green. green. Amazing. Okay. okay, you had a lot of people who guessed. 18. So doubters get wrecked. Um, but I guess actually most people were correct, and they and they had faith in me. And I, um, what do you call it? I made good on your faith. Um, so that's kind of all we had. We can stick around for a minute and do questions. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess to recap, today we looked at, we looked at elevation and how high elevation coffees will be sweeter and low elevation coffees will be a little bit nuttier, a little bit yeah. more hollow. Um, darker coffee, darker roasted coffees will be kind of more bitter and chocolatey and lighter roasted coffees will be more floral and more juicy. Uh, and then I guess we looked at processing as well where we have natural coffees that will be really loud and sometimes even boozy, um, washed coffees that are very sort of straightforward and clear. 
and wet hold coffees that are really funky. And we saw that kind of show up in all of our coffees that we tasted. Um, and kind of, I, I guess the, the big point here is that if you know what those different things do and you know what coffee you like, that just makes it easier to go and find coffees that you're into, right? Um, when you're going to the grocery store or you're going to the coffee shop, um, nice coffee shops will give you multiple options of coffees that you can pick from. Um, and you could say, oh, I like coffees that are a little bit juicier. And so, oh, that Kenyan coffee is going to be at a high elevation. And I know that's going to be juicy. So I'll go for that Kenyan, right? Mm. Um, or, you know, I really like coffee that's really chocolatey. So if they have a dark roast, I'll ask for the dark roast. Um, and that I think is the whole goal here is just to give you more tools to, um, to be able to find coffee that you enjoy because that's what we're about. Yeah. Um, and also be demonstrating that I'm not making this up and it's not fake because I got 18 out of 18. Yeah. Um, yeah and I got like a... closing thoughts. Um, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, that was really solid. I have a question actually. Yeah. Does your like mood slash want for like a sweeter coffee versus like a nuttier coffee mm. change? Like how do you know when you're in the mood for like dark roast versus a light roast coffee? Like, yeah. Or do you just have a go-to preference? No, yeah, that is a really great question. So and that's such a, such a good question. So I will say normally for me, my sort of normal ideal coffee is going to be sort of a medium light roast and okay. it's usually going to be kind of a higher elevation coffee. So like a medium light roast Ethiopian, I really like, I mean, okay. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Here, right. Um, I really like um, uh, like Kenyan coffees and Ethiopian coffees. I, I like most Colombian coffees that mm -hmm. I've tried. Um, and so that's sort of like the normal thing that I'm really into. I think there are a couple of different things that I would throw out is if I'm going for a sort of sweeter, milkier drink. So mm -hmm. say I'm doing, you know, like, like I said, I liked a pie, a pie, a spiced pumpkin latte, right? Yeah. If I was doing that, I actually would want to go for something a little bit nuttier and a little bit more chocolate, yeah. right? Because the darker you roast it and the nuttier you are, kind of the more it can stand up to milk and cream mm -hmm. and, and other flavors. Um, so that's that's one thing I would do. Um, I think things also change a little bit if I am doing like an iced coffee, which mm -hmm. I, I love iced coffees in the summer. Um, yeah. Then I am going to gravitate more towards the middle of the spectrum. Like I think like a Colombian coffee can make a really, really nice iced, iced latte, mm -hmm. say. Um, and so, yeah, there's like some different factors there. Um, I'll, I'll say broadly, this is, I don't know, we're getting way too deep into it, but I think earlier in the day, I like those sort of lighter roasted, juicier coffees. Yeah. If I'm doing a coffee later in the day, I'm more likely to want something that is like really punchy in the face coffee, right? Really dark roasted, really, um, really robust. Um, yeah. But that's a good question. That's kind of my, what is my go-to and what do, I, yeah. what do I like drinking? I guess that also kind of makes sense with what Richard said earlier, because there's less caffeine in mm -hmm. the one you would have later in the afternoon absolutely so, yeah. like dark roast will mathing. have less coffee yeah, yeah the math is math. yeah yeah we love we love building models and having them <laughs> make predictions that are true yeah uh, we um, got any other comments or uh questions a few like commentary related things so mm. hot takes on instant coffee yes okay Aer aerosol can um so actually one thing i'll say is i would refer you to oh i forget what it was but the last um hack your espresso that we did um, also, apologies. We didn't actually make any espresso this time, and so technically, hack your coffee. Hack your coffee. We should, yeah. yeah but hack your espresso sounds good. Yeah. Um, but last time, I ran through. I want to say ten different ways of making coffee from sort of low hassle to high hassle, and we started with instant coffee. And so I do have some thoughts there. Um, I think there are a couple couple quick thoughts. One is um, I think that is true about most instant coffee is that because it's being produced to be cheap. Um, a lot of times you're not going to see the best business practices. Um, sometimes coffee growers will be taken advantage of, and it often will just not be as high quality, right? Um, that's just a true thing about instant coffee. There is actually really good instant coffee out there. I know there are there are a number of, um, there's a company, I think it's called Swift Cup, um, not not run by the founder of MLH, but um, <laughs> but it could be. There could be a good brand endorsement there. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's called Swift Cup, and they make really, really good sort of traceable instant coffees. Um, there's also this company called Cometeer, um, that is kind of new and they make a, it's like a flash frozen coffee. I think we actually have some. Oh, nice. Yeah, Richard Richard got me some coffee here as a gift. Oh, Richard is gonna break, break my house. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah, it comes in this little box. We're really doing a brand promo. Yeah, really Coming here, send some, send some spawn dollars my day. Oh, just two um, left. So. But yeah, so they come in these little canisters um, and I actually think this is incredible. Incredible, right? Mm -hmm. I think that Cometeer Coffee, um, they have lots of different kinds of coffee. So actually, this is great. This is a Kenyan coffee. Um, oh. it, is, it is a washed coffee um, and it is lightly roasted. So that's a, you, you're getting all of the all of the factors there. The processing mm -hmm. is washed. The Kenyan is, is a relatively high elevation. Uh, it's, a, it's a light single origin um, and it says notes of sugar cane, blackberry jam, and vanilla cream. Mm -hmm. um, so that is actually a, a kind of instant coffee that I would really get behind. Um, I would also say like, this is what we started with is 
there have been long periods in my life where I have consumed instant coffee and it's been fine. Right. And like, and like it is still tasty and there is something still really joyful about having a hot cup of something in your hands and it gives you a caffeine boost. And I am not here to throw shade on anybody's mm -hmm. coffee joy. Um, so like, no, no shade for me. Um, I do often think that there are better alternatives. I think it actually is like really easy to make your own cold brew, really easy to make a pour over. Um, but I understand why people drink instant coffee. It is really convenient. It is really cheap. Um, and, and I guess I would just suggest like w when you have a moment, just explore different kinds of coffee and see if there are things that you like more, but, um, yeah, no shade if you really like your instant coffee. And I think there are good instant coffees out there. Yeah. We have a logistical question on the difference between coffee and espresso. Oh, this is a great question. Um, I will again, actually, so I decided that I'll alternate, um, hack your espresso events and we'll do one that's supposed to be just like very useful. And then we'll do one that's very nerdy. So this is like a nerdy one. Yeah. The previous one was supposed to be kind of useful and it was just like, here are a bunch of different ways to make coffee. Right. Um, broadly, we can separate different ways of brewing coffee into a couple of big different categories. Um, so one of the big categories is called immersion. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to pull out more props because I have so many, I have so many props. Um, so the classic immersion brewer, let's grab this preemptively. The classic immersion brewer is the French press. Um, so this is basically, you put all your coffee in this little canister, um, you put your water in there, you let it sit for a minute, and then you basically plunge it out so you can separate the coffee from that water. And so the way it's brewing is that the water is just kind of hanging out there, right? Um, the other big way that we brew coffee is called percolation. So the classic example of this is this is a Hario V60 where um, you put coffee in the top and you pour water over it and you're getting that brewing from the water passing through the coffee. Um, and the thing that we use today with actually kind of an interesting cross between them, right? Because oh, yeah. remember coffee was hanging out with water here, just, um, just immersing. And then there was a little bit of a percolation step where we popped that up mm -hmm. and, it, and it flew through the coffee. Um, people will disagree about this, but um, espresso is technically a percolation uh, kind, of, kind of brew method. Um, I don't know if you will be able to see super well, but the espresso machine here, you put your ground coffee into the port filter. Uh, so you're, you will grind your coffee very finely and it will go in cover this little, face. yeah, cover, cover your face as well. <laughs> oh, perfect, well done, well done. It'll go into this little, um, this little chamber and you will be forcing hot water through it. Um, I guess one of the big differences is that with an espresso machine, you're not just letting gravity do the work. You yeah. actually have a pump that is really pressurizing that water. And so it leads to a really strong, really small cup of coffee. Um, but espresso is a kind of coffee, yeah. right? It is just a particular kind of percolation method um, where you are pushing the water through your little coffee puck. Uh, hopefully that kind of answers it. Um, also, I guess a big, a big part of this is that often espresso is combined with steamed milk to make drinks like a cappuccino or a latte or a cortado. So you get a lot of espresso drinks using espresso as the base. Nice. Um, uh, ooh, somebody's asking about the bitterness of instant coffee. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is not a great answer, but sometimes you can find um, lightly roasted instant coffee. Actually, Starbucks has a blonde roast instant coffee that I think is yeah. actually quite decent, right? Um, I can't speak to whether or not it's like ethical or like if mm -hmm. they are ripping off suppliers, um, but um, it tastes a little bit less bitter because as we talked about, the lighter you're roasting, the more you're going to stay away from those sort of like dark bitter notes. Um, the other thing, and it's like, I like drinking coffee black. If you have some really bitter instant coffee, put milk in that, put some brown sugar in that, put some maple syrup in that, put some honey in it, right? Like you can just put, you know, add milk and some kind of sweetener and that'll give you something that I would say is going to be more palatable if you're tasting your instant coffee and it's like really dark and really bitter. Uh, but okay. yeah, it's a, it's a struggle. Okay. So someone's asking, would it be more potent if the water poured over instead of just sitting? Ooh, okay. So I guess is this um, in reaction to the immersion method? I, I think I'm, so. That's what, that's what I'm going to intuit. Um, and yeah, there's actually, okay. So there are a million different big nerd rabbit holes. There is a really, really good paper that I will try to find and send to the discord where they do this sort of chemical analysis of, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if, if folks have taken chemistry classes, but there is, uh, it technically, I guess, comes to like the idea of a solution being hypertonic or hypotonic. Mm -hmm. So when you have the immersion brew, you have coffee sitting in there and every second the water spends in there, it is becoming more coffeeified, right? And so you have more coffee solids dissolved in your water. And when you have more coffee solids dissolved in your water, it's actually going to dissolve less, right? Because there's already a lot of coffee stuff in there. 
the coffee stuff that's still in your grounds are going to be less interested in going into solution. Um, this is probably nerdier than you asked. But when you do the pour over method, um, because every like you're constantly refreshing it with fresh water, you are constantly having water that has no coffee dissolved in it. And so it can do a better job of extracting. Um, this kind of gets balanced out with the fact that the water just spends less time in contact when you're doing percolation. Um, and so you end up with kind of a different kind of coffee. Um, immersion coffee is often going to have more texture. We haven't really talked about body much, mm. um, but um, if you do an immersion method, you're more likely to have something that tastes a little bit creamy or maybe even a little bit like chunky in your mouth. And with the pour over, you're likely to have something that is very smooth and very clean, but still has like a really big coffee punch. Um, so that's maybe my, my quick answer. Yes. Okay, awesome. I feel like there's no questions. So I feel like it's a good time yeah. to release our secret word in the Google form. Oh, yes. Yeah, such a You are such a good manager <laughs> of live streams. I totally forgot about that. This um, is the same link as yesterday, so, correct? Yeah, yeah. And you do the short URL. Boom. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's say the secret word is coffee. So we're going to drop this link. Um, and actually, importantly, if you have any feedback, if you there was something that you want to learn about that we didn't talk about, if there was something that we talked about that you thought was useless, like give me all that feedback. If you just want to say you liked it, um, then you can send that as well. Um, oh, also, I think I asked you to click what session it is. Um, you can just click the second session because it's technically, it'll actually, can, can you in real in real time add? I, add the question, yeah, I think I can. Yeah. Hold on. Um, just add, yeah, add oh, yeah. option. Coffee, hack your coffee. Hack, hack your coffee, yeah. You can add that, perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, so now if you, re if you refresh the form, it just saved. Yeah. Um, but um, if you have any feedback on the session, if you thought it was fun, if you thought it was boring, if there's something specifically you want answered for next time, let us know. Um, and then also you can vote um, on what color I should dye my hair. Hannah really wants blonde. What I really do. Want? Also blonde. Okay, so these, these folks want blonde. So if you yeah. want to make them happy, pick blonde. Yeah. Um, but you can pick any color you want, um, but put the secret word um, coffee in there. Just C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. Yeah, I should put it in the message box at the end because there's no like space for it. Yeah, yeah, just put it right. in the message. And I'm going to go through and just filter. Does it have the word coffee in it? Is it for the coffee session? And if so, your vote will come. I need to learn to use like sheets in Excel properly at work. You can be a power user, yeah. I wait. want to be. Okay, wait, but are you gonna are you gonna use Excel or are you gonna use Google Sheets? Okay, okay. I do like Google Sheets. <laughs> I'm a, I'm an avid uh, Google Docs, Google Suite user. Did you say that again? Oh my Damn Siri. Oh my goodness. Um, but like I had like we had to serve we did like user testing at work and like I had fifty one responses and I needed to like go through them and I was like contains this and it still didn't work and I just think Excel is not intuitive <laughs> so yeah I hear that um, Adam is asking oh yeah he did he did win fish name choice last yes time, right? oh yeah we'll have to bring back the fish cam yeah oh yeah uh, fish yeah cam. I believe one of them was named Blahaj obviously okay. one of them was named. Um, was it Adam? Buffy? Oh, I don't remember that. And then one of them was named Piefish, I think. Oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a good name. Yeah, um, a little hard to explain to the family, maybe. You're like, yeah, yeah. Piefish. Trust fish. me, we do this a lot. We put <laughs> pie before things. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we have to bring that back to fish cam because last time people got to pick uh, fish names. This time you get to pick what color my hair is. Yeah, I mean, I think the hair is a cool option. Blonde would look good. Yeah, I mean, Will did have blonde hair. I don't know if. Yeah, in the past I've had blonde hair. I did red once, and I did purple for like three days. Oh, wow. three days! Why three days? I just got tired of okay. it. <laughs> I was thinking. I found this like because I have commitment issues, so I was just yeah. like, I can't. I don't want to dye my hair, but I found this like long-lasting hair dye shampoo situation, mm -hmm. and I think I might do that. And it has a purple option, so oh, I dig it. But I have very dark hair, so it's different because I feel like I don't know. I feel like it needs to be like it might not be as visible. Someone's yeah, asking fair. what about green. Mm, mm, I, I mean, you can vote for it. Honestly, you can you can rally the troops and get people from your guild to vote for the same thing to, yeah. to win it. Oh, actually, maybe we could do an update on what people have currently voted oh, for. Yeah, okay. You can go to responses. Oh, we already got a lot of responses from this one. Should um, be a little chart somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So currently, ooh, okay, this is good. Currently, blue is in the lead with twenty four votes. Uh, blonde is not far behind with seventeen votes. Yeah. Then it, it trails off. What yeah. is that with 12%? 12 is red. Okay, a lot of folks want red. One person wants black. Okay. Okay. Um, some people put in their own options. I see like pink, yeah. purple, or rainbow. Ooh, bubblegum pink would be very Ooh, fun. that'd be really fun. Yeah, yeah. Right, especially for like the summer. We have, yeah, just like a mix of like pink, purple. We have a few okay. silvers. What I have to do is all the ones that got more than one vote, 
I'll add to the poll. Okay. So now I'll actually add like silver will be one you can just click. Yes, so. I think that's a good idea. I have to go through that. Yeah. All right. Orange. Well, yeah. we're technically four minutes over, um, but yeah. thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's a blast. It is like, like I said, one of my favorite things to do every for every Global Hack Week. And yeah. this time it was a blast to have some yeah. friendos over. It was um, so uh, fun to join y'all. Thanks for letting us try all your yeah, coffee, Will. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Thanks for giving me your, your incredible insights and oh. feedback. <laughs> and thank you for playing along. Um, I guess I'll just do the final plug in an hour. I'm going to be hopping back on stream and doing machine learning part two. Um, but the only thing we covered in part one is um, an intro to Python. So if you already have some exposure to Python, and honestly, even if you don't, you can jump in at part two. Um, I would say part three and part four, they really start building. But part two, even if you haven't seen part one, you are still welcome to join and it will not be hard to follow along. So I hope to see many of you there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, should we call it? Yeah, we should call it. Have right. a good rest of your day, everyone. Can't wait to see you at Machine Learning Part 2. Bye, friends. Bye.